Who is really causing the chaos at PYLUSD? Well, the one thing I know for sure, it's not Dr. Alex Chernis. That is for sure. Hey friends, uh, we have a, a number of people uh, that are uh, truly, um, have truly lost their moral compass when it comes to uh, education in our school district. And and have been unfortunately been overtaken by simply a hatred uh, for people, and it has uh, apparently bled into a uh, a way of not caring for the education of our children and the health and safety of our children in our school district. And these folks that I've talked about in the last couple of videos, and I'm going to revisit some of them and, and make sure you know who they are, uh, because you need to understand. The reason you need to know who they are is because you need to understand who they are representing when they are out on these social media platforms and perhaps even at pickup with your children or out in other school districts causing chaos. And I'll bring this all together. I'm going to do my very best to keep it as simple as possible. Not that you would not be able to understand it. It's just there's so much happening out there. There's so much misinformation and so much desire to cause the chaos, which is frustrating. Many parents who are busy working, they're busy taking their kids to the school events and, and sports events and, and everything else has to do, and they just don't know what to believe anymore. And I'm, and I'm going to give you uh, the information, I'm going to give you the supporting information, and hopefully it'll help you understand that the group of people that are causing the chaos is not Leander Blades, Todd Frazier, Sean Youngblood, Dr. Alex Chernis, and the rest of the executive staff that are currently at PYLUSD. So let's get into it this really quick. So we have these folks right here. Um, I mentioned them before. I added a slide, but we have Patricia Hanzo uh, that also goes by another name on some of the social media platform. We got uh, Gail Pogue. We have Danielle and Todd Botley. I've just learned that Todd actually is also very active in causing chaos on places like Nextdoor and some other the other social media uh, platforms. You got Carrie Brunel, uh, Sonia D. Uh, you have these women that were out uh, outside Esperanza, all on their own. Just these women uh, out there. Uh, Patricia Hanzo is the one in the hat. Again, she goes by another name on other social media platforms. And um, coming back to my camera, uh, these folks and others, which I'm going to uh, make sure that you know who they are too through their uh, screenshots of their uh, comments on social media, is that many of these women, although some of them do have children at the school, many of them don't. Uh, some of them are former teachers or retired teachers. Uh, some of them are um, just what, for whatever reason supporters of Carrie Bucks. Uh, who who knows why? Uh, Marilyn Anderson, same. Um, and. They, they've been involved in this somewhat of a cabal. I know I like using that word, but it is, a, it is a group of organizations and people, which essentially is a cabal, which spread a mass amount of information that is simply false and lies to give you the impression that things are out of hand at the school district or out of hand at another organization. They, 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 they've done this in, our, in many other political platforms, uh, uh, whether it's a Senate race or a, Cong a Congress race um, or presidential race. But these people on a, on a local polit political standpoint are simply taking a, uh, a play out of the playbook on what it is they need to do to get things done their way. To give you, the parent who simply wants their kid to be educated, who does not want other things to get in the way of education, which don't belong in schools, which is a lot of the things that they believe in uh, and are supporting. You know, I don't even know if they believe in it. They just know that it, it causes problems within the school district and they're hoping the union can be used to fix those problems that they create. Um, but these people that I just named are, are not representative of parents who care about the education of your children. You need to know that. And so a, a comment like this by uh, Lloyd Porter, uh, apparently a retired teacher, uh, has no children in the school district that I know of. He may have grandchildren or great-great-grandchildren. Who knows? But um, he likes to go on the social medias and, again, say things that are not true. Like this. Oh, no, it hasn't. More than 10 administrators have been given notice of termination or demolition. Lloyd, that's a lie. And he knows it's a lie. And um, he is just simply spreading it. And he, he repeats it over and over again amongst a whole bunch of other things. This is just one example of what Lloyd Porter says that is not true. 
Uh, you have Gail Pogue, which I just showed you in that screenshot. And she says, if you have children in the school district, heads up, board is dumping tenured teachers and admins and superintendents. Make your voice heard, email them or call the district. Yes, do so, so that the district can tell you that this is a lie and this is wrong. No, this is all a lie and I will prove it to you shortly. Um, you have Samantha Hampton Kadra, who apparently is married to a teacher at Yorba Linda High School. And she says, things are happening and people need to know. Please get informed. Beloved admin and teachers are at risk. Some already have lost their jobs. Not true for not being fit. My heart is breaking uh, for PYLUSD. And then it's just another screenshot from another social media platform. I wanted to give you, she words it slightly different here at the bottom. She says, my heart is breaking for our PYL." PYLUSD. And what she simply does is, is, is uh, cut and paste these lies and post them um, in different groups and platforms um, in social media. Um, you have Shawnee uh, Murray. Oh, uh, she's a hoot. Uh, she says, I agree. It is very concerning to hear of PYL losing so many dedicated educators. We're not losing one, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, which will negatively impact our students. Again, simply a lie uh, that it is not happening. Um, and then I just want to make sure and, and show you this. This is Carrie Buck uh, from her uh, re-election campaign. And I just want to read you what she wrote because you would think that the fact that we're not losing any students would be uh, a great thing. And she would be singing the praises of the, the, uh, the school board and uh, Dr. Alex Chernis because she writes here, enrollment is declining in our district and has been for many years. Number one, many years means it's all during her tenure on the school board. And most of those years has been when it's been all of her buddies on the school board, not Leander Blades, Todd Frazier, and Sean Youngblood. Things have turned around since those three have been on. But while she's been in charge, while she's been in charge, just making sure you understand this, that the uh, daily average of attendance was dipping below 96% um, and probably more. And, and uh, there are no new children uh, enrolling. As a matter of fact, enrollments declined. Um, and then she claims, which is not true, that over the last two years, we have not had to also make, that's not good English, I don't think, had to make uh, um, uh, significant cuts to our district budget and programs because of our success of this advocacy. Uh, that, that also is not true. The, 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 the decline has been under her, but the fact that she's saying, or what she's trying to claim as a fact, uh, is not true, that cuts were not made. That I'll show you that that's a lie also. Um, first of all, uh, here is Dr. Alex Chernis. Remember, they claim that he doesn't have uh, uh, transparency or is not transparent in what's happening in the school district. But you see here in, a, in an Orange County Register, he's also said this in school board meetings. I don't know where else they want him to say this, but I think he's even said it in the good news reports that he does on Mondays. Um, but um, here he is being transparent, even though there are signs at Esperanza and all around, be more transparent. Well, here you go. He says, uh, first, the, the most important thing is this, no layoffs are expected. Again, I, I just like to repeat these things. No layoffs are expected and no pink slips have been handed out to any teachers. Now, that remember the post that all these um, people uh, said is that people are being fired as we speak. It's happening all over. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bloodbath. <laughs> and no, no uh, uh, pink slips have been handed out to any teachers or administrators. PYLUSD Superintendent Alex Chernis said, hmm. And then he says, at time, at a time when our when other school districts in Orange County, and I would say LA County, Riverside County, San Diego County, are laying off teachers, not only teachers, but hundreds of teachers, new enrollment in PYLUSD is booming, Cherna said, being very transparent. Uh, in the next paragraph, uh, in one of the next paragraphs, he says, from January 1st to March 13th, PYLUSD had 200, 226 new transitional kindergarten and kindergarten students. During the same period for the same grades in 2024, PYLUSD had 634 new students enrolled, a 180% increase. Now, didn't, now coming back to my camera, didn't Carrie Buck say that, that um, enrollment had been declining, but we need to make a change, that we need more enrollment, that we need more? So, well, here you have... Dr. Alex Chernis and the, um, the at least the three school board members have made significant changes, which has increased the enrollment and attendance in our schools, and they're 
telling people to protest. They're telling people to quickly call the school district. It's a bloodbath. Teachers and administrators are being fired like crazy. It, we've never seen such a thing at the school district. Isn't that what they're saying in these social media posts? Yes, that's what they're saying. But the fact is that is simply not true. And since it's not true, you would think that they would be so incredibly happy. You would think the teachers union, APLE, uh, California Teachers Association, they would be so happy that zero teachers have been given pink slips that you think they would be singing the praises of Dr. Alex Chernis and his executive staff and the three school board members. But no, they are telling their people, which are the people I just showed you, all the names of the people commenting, the people pictured in the earlier slides, those are all union essentially representatives. They're also campaign um, uh, workers for Carrie Buck. Um, and she is essentially um, the, the person who could tell these people, hey, you know what? Things are things are happening here. We are not losing administrators uh, like we have in the past. We are not firing any teachers, even though a lot of people have said that. But no, does Carrie Buck say that? Does Marilyn Anderson say that? Does she stop all the madness? No, she does not. Uh, here is something you need to see. This is a list I received of the uh, principals that have been uh, either resigned, retired, or released. And here is what you're going to see is that in... 2020-21, uh, when Leandra, when the when the when the community saw it best to bring in a school a new school board member, and eventually two and then three school board members, they saw that apparently that in 2020 to 2021, in the principals category, uh, they, who resigned, retired, or were released was 12, 12. It wasn't fewer like Carrie Buck wanted you to believe in her campaign ad. It was more than probably any other time. And I, and I don't know what the years previous to that, but during Carrie Buck's and her, um, uh, her friends that were on the school board with her, um, that she was trying to protect, uh, you'd, you'd seen a, a heck of a lot of principals released. Uh, from their job, resigned, retired, or released. And then you get Le uh, Leandra Blades, and then you start to get Sean Youngblood, and you see the decline of the principals actually being resigned, retired, or released. Uh, and those numbers go down significantly from six in 2021, 2022, um, to only five in 2022, 23. And this number of three that I have here, this is what I know of, that there, there's one retiring, uh, not retiring, there's one resigning and possibly going somewhere else. Uh, and then you got two more that I know of that their contracts are not being renewed. Now, there may be one more. I'm not 100% sure, but I know for sure three. That is still much less than 20 20, uh, 2021 school year where um, uh, Buck apparently had thought, well, things are great. <laughs> things are great. You have 12 principals leave uh, when you were in charge along with your, with your friends. So uh, that all is a lie. Um, the, uh, the principals who are resigning, retiring, or, or have been released, the numbers are much lower. And um, the, the walkout the other day was all for nothing. It was all for a lie that the kids have been told and unfortunately believed. Um, they were also probably given something like, um, you know, community service hours for protesting. Uh, a lot of that thing is th those things have been done in the past. I wouldn't uh, hold it against some of the teachers who are union um, um, supportive and representatives that they told these kids that, hey, if you uh, hold these signs and walk out and get other kids to do it, we'll make sure and give you some community hours or something like that. The reason I can say that is because they have done that in the past um, uh, when we were approaching elections. Uh, we then have uh, Carrie uh, Brunel here and Angela Eilers. Uh, both of them uh, are very active in spreading false information. And she says here, I think they are trying to privatize our district one school at a time. Get rid of the staff that doesn't want to play their games. That is not true. And what they're making reference to is to the charter school uh, schools that are coming in. And those are dr district run charter schools. They are not outside charter schools. Those are district run charter schools. The reason why Carrie Brunel, Angela Eilers, uh, Carrie Buck, um, uh, Sh um, Shani, and um, uh, Karen, um, all these uh, people, uh, the reason that they don't like it is because the unions aren't as involved in the charter schools and they have no authority in the charter schools. That is why the charter schools are trying to bring them down. Do not believe 
that they're going to make it religious curriculum. Do not believe that um, people are being replaced and fired because they're no longer in the school district or whatever other nonsense they're telling you. These employees are still part of the Placentia Yorbalinda Unified School District, and they are um, uh, not going anywhere, at least as long as they're doing their job and educating children, doing the things they're supposed to do. And um, none of the things that they're trying to tell you um, uh, that's going to be bad about their charter schools is... Uh, what's happening. So um, th this uh, post is simply not true. The next one I have here, Patricia Hanzo. That's what I actually meant when I said Karen. Patricia Hanzo. I don't know why I called her Karen. <laughs> but Patricia Hanzo. Um, uh, she writes, keep beloved principles, demand transparency from district leaders and Superintendent Alex Chernis. Uh, stop attacking public schools like this. Again, these are words to cause um, fear to cause chaos, to cause uh, parents to think that there's a problem in the school district when in fact the opposite is true. Patricia Hanzo is is a, um, uh, a very uh, vocal representative or supporter of the of the school teachers unions or the teachers unions and um, Carrie Bucks and it's just simply this is a way of um, again creating a sense of. Um, uh, in chaos, I know it's being overused, but I can't, t I can't think of anything else. And then because they think that they're bringing in some type of religious uh, curriculum, you got Julie Sicard, um, who is um, the secretary, as it says right there. As many of you know, I am the tre oh, treasurer. I'm sorry, I said secretary. As many of you know, I am the treasurer for Carrie Buck for PYL. So this person is um, a representative of Carrie Buck. Carrie Buck obviously uh, probably said something to her and said, hey, you want to you, you need to do something about these religious zealots uh, because um, they believe or they think by telling all of you parents who are either Muslim or atheist or um, uh, Mormon or um, uh, Jewish, what, what have you, is that they want you to believe that there's some religious curriculum being put in. This is not true. But they, uh, uh, Carrie Buck put her treasure up to um, going after Pastor Jack Hibbs. Now, I'm not sure if because that's my pastor. That's where I go to church, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, in addition to going to Calvary Chapel, East Anaheim. Oh, sorry about that, Pastor Bob. I put you, I put you in the uh, crosshairs. But um, I, I, I speak highly of Dr., uh, uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs. We interviewed him on our podcast. And, uh, and so they thought, well, let's go after him. And so she, she sicked Julie Sicard on here. And here she writes in a, in proudly in a post, and she actually later says she's proud of doing it. She writes, hateful preacher Jack Hibbs from Calvary Chapel brought Minor and Ledesma, who they uh, were instrumental in getting recalled over at Orange Unified School District, up in front of his congregation, called the teachers union demonic, true, uh, urging people to vote uh, no on the recall. Um, and so over here on the right-hand side, uh, she, uh, uh, we have Patricia Advocates, who is Patricia Hanzo. That's her other name. So if you see Patricia Advocates or Patricia Hanzo, one and the same person. And again, they reported uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs uh, to the IRS. Um, as you can see down in Julie's, I reported him to the IRS tax ID number and um, proudly saying that she reported a pastor to the IRS. So how can I bring um, Carrie Buck into all this? Well, here's Carrie Buck uh, in the Chino Valley School District. And um, she is uh, chairing on this, when this picture was taken, an event which is uh, how to recall and cause chaos um, uh, in the Chino Valley School District. How does she know how to cause chaos and to get people recalled? Because she is putting her people into action here in PYL USD. She has experience doing this type of thing. And so she goes and she chairs at an event in Chino Valley School District. Um, and she is telling them how to do the same thing there. Um, she was also part of the Orange Unified School District. So this gives you a little bit, and let me just show you a close-up picture. This is her right there sitting in the middle. This gives you an idea of the type of person that we have on the school board that her interest is not in education. Her interest, interest is not in caring for the safety and health of children in our school. Her interest is in union issues. Her interest is in trying to get as much money as possible for their agendas and for their um, indoctrination um, uh, uh, policies and, and, again, curriculums. And so she is really upset that uh, we are actually making, I say we as parents 
and uh, the three school board members and Dr. Chernus and his executive staff. She is really upset that we are bringing education back to Placentia Yarbalinda Unified School District. And now she is in, being invited to chair events in the other school districts because she had some success at Orange Unified School District getting um, uh, Madison and Rick recalled. Um, she wants to do it here and she's getting her people in line to do that. That's how, why she's calling, causing so much chaos in our school district, PYLUSD. And she's over in the Chino Valley School District telling them how to do it too. She figures if she can get these three school districts uh, in line with recalls and turning it back to the poor um, curriculum, uh, the poor standards that they've had in the past, that they'll be able to bring back the good old days when children were not being uh, educated or being cared for. One last thing I want to talk about before I go to the next slide is that I've been struggling because when the um, the people that I just named are are talking about transparency, they they are saying this one they bring this one aspect up uh, in regard to transparency that they want the the superintendent and the school board to tell you why the the two especially the two uh, principals contracts have not been renewed well knowing that they are these are HR issues and it's illegal for them to do so. And they figure they can attack by by claiming something and using a um, uh, some 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 posts in in social media to get you to believe that they are not being transparent. But most of you are smart enough to understand that that employees are protected by the law when it comes to the issues that related to their human resources. However, when a private person like me gets information and I can share it, um, then I've been attacked. How dare he do that? He cannot, he cannot share this information. He must be getting it from somewhere. And they make videos, cutting and slicing it, making it sound like I'm saying something that I didn't. They do everything they can to cause me harm. They uh, bring my children into it where they attack my children. They've attacked the children of one of the other principals at the school who supports Dr. Chernus and the school board um, and threatened her to where she had to file a, a sheriff's report of terrorist threats against her and her children. They do that when it is that we have um, information that harms their narratives to the negative or that counteracts what it is they're trying to do. And so I have decided, I'm gonna just bring this slide up really fast and then move on from it. That's the information that I just put up about, um, shoot, I forgot his name, uh, Giles, Principal Giles over at Esperan Esperanza. That is the information of about five or six different incidents as, as to what caused his contract to not be renewed. Now, again, that's public information. I really could read it. The problem is, is that there's other people involved. There's other people that their lives will be highly affected. If it's not already, it's, it's quite possibly that their lives have been affected by his bad decisions and um, not taking action um, and taking a stand when he should have. But I don't know even though it's what those other people did was also unsavory. Uh, I don't know. I still have not decided that it's my place. You can find this information. Again, the school board, the district is, is, cannot share the information. The attacks that they're not being transparent as to why they're not renewing their contract is a false attack. They, they, they know well that they can't share that information. And I'm, I'm going to refrain from being used by them to ruin the lives of other people um, to this, to, to this extent. Now there was some information that was important to release about what was happening at El Dorado. I did that because that, um, involved law enforcement, which of course I'm a police officer, uh, retired where I think the attacking of uh, police officers and creating a hostile work environment, I think just has to be pointed out and you need to understand what kind of person is running that kind of school. So that needed to be addressed. And that was again, public information that I was fully aware of and brought to my attention. But this other one is different because it involves a lot of other people. And so I, I decided I'm not going to share it. So I hope in the end, this video helps you understand who really is causing the chaos. It's the, the group of people plus a few others that I, I, I will bring up later on. And once I get more information on them, uh, but you got to understand that these people have, do not have your children's best interest in mind. They do not have the education, the uh, physical health and the mental health of your children's interest in mind. And so you need to reject what it is they're saying. Understand that the union has no interest 
in the truth because if they did, they'd be praising um, Dr. Alex Chernus and the school board members who have um, made it possible to fire zero teachers in our school. All right, my friends, I hope this helped. I'll talk to you later. Take care.